Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question best time to buy and sell stock version 3. So normally these type of those stock based questions I personally find them a little bit confusing but when they, uh, once you understand the concept of how to utilize uh, state machines to solve these problems it actually becomes a lot easier to understand. So what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to explain what they are from scratch. If you don't know what it is, don't worry. It's a very simple concept. And we're going to uh, go step by step of building our state machine. And then we're going to try to convert the data or the visualization we came up with. And we're going to try to convert that into code. Okay, so let's just start off by reading what the question actually is. So in this question, say you have an array for which the ith element is the price of a given stock on day i. So what this means is uh, the first element is going to be the price on day one. The fifth element is going to be price of day five, so on and so forth. We need to design an algorithm to find the maximum profit. You may complete at most two transactions. Okay, so all this is saying is that once we buy, so buy a stock, we can sell it. We can buy another stock and we can sell it. So we can do more than that. So we can do a maximum of two transactions. And that actually makes this question a little bit easier, according to me. Anyways, uh, now we need to know. So one thing we need to note is that you may not engage in multiple transactions at the same time. So what that means is, let's say I bought a stock and now I'm holding it. I cannot buy another stock in that period. That's not possible. I can only buy another stock once I have sold what I currently have. So let's take a look at a quick example before we go on to the whiteboard. Okay, so over here, uh, we have these prices, right? So uh, just a quick example. So this is at the index two. So that means that's the price for day two, pretty straightforward. So what do we do over here? So what we're doing actually is we're buying on this day over here. We're buying on day four and we're gonna sell over here. So on day six, so what is the profit? So let's just go step by step. On this day, since we're buying for zero rupees or dollars or whatever, uh, in that case, um, we're not going to be spending any money. Zero is basically free. So our profit as of now is zero. Now we're going to sell that for a price of three. And when we sell that, we're going to be gaining profit. So now we're going to get plus three. So our profit is going to be zero plus three, which equals to three. Again, what we're going to do over here now is we're going to buy over here. So when you buy, you need to spend money. And when you're spending money, you lose profit. So we're doing three minus one. And right now our profit is two. And finally, we're going to sell at a price of four. And over here, we're selling at a price of four, so our profit increases by four. Two plus four is six, and we get our answer over here. So we just went through it real quickly just to understand the question, but how can we do this step by step in order to get the solution in the most optimal way? So to do that, let's um, look at the idea of state machines. All right, so what are the conditions or cases that we have? So our stock or our program per se can be in several different positions. It could be in a resting position, right? So this could be like a position where it's not doing anything. We could be in a holding position. So think of this position as you bought a stock and now you're waiting to sell it. So that's one of the positions you can be in. And the other po position is when you sold a stock, sorry, stock. So you sold a stock. So now you, you might be waiting for a time where you can buy again or you're done with uh, selling it for a total of two times. So over here we have the very uh, uh, we have a restriction, and the restriction is that we can make a maximum of two transactions. So these are the things that we kind of have to keep in mind, and we can uh, use this to draw our state machine. Well, what is a state machine? In very simple words, it's used to represent a different the different states the program can be at one point. So let's just look at all of these four states or how many ever states. So in the beginning. We're going to start off with a zero state, right? So uh, this is a zero state. This is the state that we're always going to start off in. And at the state, we don't have anything. We don't hold any stocks. Our profit is going to be zero all the time if we stay in the state. So what can happen here? We can rest, right? So what this arrow represents is that we can stay in the state for however long. And when we're staying in the state, we're trying to look for a time when we can buy. That's when we move on to our next state. So let's say we found something for a good price, right? And we want to buy it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to buy. And when you buy, you move on to the next state. 
I'm going to call this state A. So in state A, you have now bought a stock and right now you're holding the stock. So you bought the stock and you're just waiting for a time when you could possibly sell it, right? So this is one of our, our states and the profit over here is going to be negative because when you're buying, it takes away money from you, right? And we don't make money until we sell it. So let's say we now have a time when we can sell it. This is when we move on to our next state. So I'm going to call this state B, right? And this is going to stand for when we have sold. So right now we were holding a stock, but now we sold it. So now we're going to switch states. So over here, once we switch states, uh, we have made profit, hopefully. So we're going to just add whatever value of price it is to our profit. So, uh, and after this, we can stay in this state for how much ever long, since we're waiting for the next time we can buy. And again, similarly, we have uh, C. So state C is gonna be the same thing where we end up buying something and we're gonna stay here while we're holding that stock. And finally, we reach our end state. Uh, and so that I'll just call it D. So D is gonna be our last and final state that we could reach. And over here, uh, we are done. We sold our stock and there's nothing left to do. We're just gonna stay here and we're done with the program. So these are the four states we have. And I'm not really gonna consider this state per se. And the reason for that is because it's always going to be at a value of zero. So now that we have this, I think we have a pretty good clarity on what the question is and how we could possibly approach it. So what we want to do is we want to convert this diagram or the state machine that we've made and we want to convert it into code form. How can we do that? Over here, we can kind of split it up into two main sections. Uh, the first being buying and the second being selling. Right. So those are kind of the two actions that we have. Right. And that's what determines uh, how we change states. So that's pretty important. So let's take a look at buying. So in both of these conditions, we are starting off at a state called state. Right. So think of state as a variable and it's going to be the current state that we are on. So when you buy, you can actually be in two states. So when you before buying, you're currently in a state which uh, you still didn't buy anything, you don't have anything, but you're waiting for to, waiting to buy. So you could do one of two things. You can keep waiting. So if you keep waiting, you're still going to stay in that same state. Your other option, though, is to actually buy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous state. So let's just say the previous state is called X. And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract that with whatever the current price is. And the reason for that is because when you're buying, you're spending money, so our profit is going to decrease. So these are the one of two things that we're gonna have that is gonna happen. And in order to choose between which one we want, we're gonna take the maximum between these two. Okay, similarly, let's look at selling. So when you're selling, you can do one of two things. You currently have a stock and you're waiting to sell. So right now you could stay in your same state. You could stay at this current state that you are in. And your other option is to actually sell it. And when you sell something, you're moving from one state to another and you're making profit. So you're going to add that price to your profit. So you're going from state X plus price. And if you still don't understand what X means, just think of X as the previous state which you're coming from, right? And so we're going to take that plus price. So, and uh, again, uh, to choose which value we want to stay in, we're just going to choose the maximum of it. Pretty simple. And uh, why maximum, you might ask? Well, if you just look at it logically, when you're selling, you want to be able to gain the highest profit. And when you're buying, you want to lose the least amount of money possible. And it's just the concept of buy low, sell high. Pretty simple. Okay, so now let's actually transform this into code. So our first step is going to be to check whether the prices list actually has values in it. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to see if, so if not prices, and in that case, we're just going to end up returning zero. Okay, so now that we uh, took care of that, we can start with making our state machine. And let's just take into account all of the states we had. So we had A, we had B, we had C, and we had D. Right, uh, these are gonna correlate to the previous diagram. So if you wanna draw that comparison, try you can try doing that. So A is gonna be initialized with whatever is at the zeroth index, so the first element. So price is zero. 
So over here, it's actually not just going to be price is zero. It's going to be negative price is zero. And the reason for that is that we're actually just going to be looking at the profits directly. So when you're buying, the profit will be negative, right? Or at least it would decrease. And for everything else, we're going to give it a value of negative infinity. And the reason for that is because all these values are going to get overwritten regardless. So uh, that's why we want to just give it a value of negative infinity. And to do that in Python, you do float and then negative inf. So that's the value of negative infinity. Okay, so now that we uh, kind of now that we've initialized our variables, we're going to iterate through each of our prices. So for price and prices. Now we're going to kind of change the values of each of our states. And we're going to do that similar to how we did it in our diagram. So let's start off with A. So, so when we're in A, we have one of two options. We can either stay there. So that's uh, this represents just staying in A. Or we can buy that stock. So if you were to buy that stock, it would be negative price. And again, price is the current price of that day. Okay, now let's go on to B. So now we have B and in B, similarly, we have two states. One, we can stay in B. So when we're staying in it, we, it means that we're waiting to sell the stock. And two, what we could do is we can buy the stock from A and sell it at whatever the current price is. So we're going to go from A to B. So we're going to say A plus price, and it's going to be plus price because we're selling it. Okay, so now we're going to go to C, and similarly, max between C and C is going to be the current state it's at, or we could buy it, and when we're buying it, we're going from B to C, right? We're changing states. So what we're going to do over here, we're going to do B minus our price. And finally, we have D, which is going to be considered as our last state, and over here, we're going to take the maximum between D and the pre. So in D, we're going to be selling, right? So we're going to go from the previous state and increase our profit. So we're going to do C plus the price. And that's it. And sorry. And we're going to end up returning the value of D, since D is actually going to have the highest value. And over here, I know it might be a little bit confusing. Well, you might be thinking, well, what if we actually just only make one transaction? And to explain that, let's just go into a debugger real quick. And I think it should be pretty clear over there. Okay, regardless, uh, when you submit it, our submission did get uh, accepted. So yeah. Okay, so over here, you can see the value. So these are the prices that I chose. This is the same from our first example, 33500314. Okay, and this shows us the value of our variables. So in the beginning, A has a value of negative 3. B, C, and D obviously have negative infinity. So let's just, let me just show you what happens as we move through it. So negative 3 stays as negative 3. And over here, B is actually going to change in value. So what are the two options it has? It can either stay in B, so that's negative infinity, or it can move to A plus price. So A has a value of negative 3, and the price is 3. So that's going to be 0. So I think you understand that. But what I really want to explain over here is through our first iteration, even though we iterated through it only one time, we somehow still got the answer for the value D. And this sounds a little bit confusing because when you think about it or go back to the diagram which we found, D actually represents the value of when we sell. So we buy, sell, buy, and sell again. So we performed the action a total of two times. So how is it that in the first iteration, we have a value for D that actually doesn't even make sense? And the answer to that is actually pretty simple. So all the value of D is doing, it's kind of doing two of the transactions in the same day. So it's buying on day one, selling on day one, and it's repeating that again, buying on day one and selling on day one again. So uh, currently our price value is three. So that's the first one. Uh, let me just iterate through the next one. Okay, so now that we iterate through the next one, our D value uh, still exists. It's a value of zero. So what happened over here now is we bought on the first day, sold on the uh, second day, and then afterwards we bought on day two and sold on day two. So if you want to see, uh, you could keep going on. And I would highly recommend you to use the debugger if you still don't understand it. You can go by it step by step and see how the variables are changing at each of the step. I'm not going to do that since it takes quite a lot of time iterating through each of the prices, but I highly recommend that you try it out if you still have any doubts. 
And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any feedback or if you want me to solve any specific lead code questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.